What is the real danger of eating processed and fake food? So it's really hard these days to not find something that hasn't been bioengineered, is pro highly processed, or even lab generated. It is literally everywhere. So there's some real concerns about this. And depending on who you ask, it can really influence a lot around your health. And I don't know that we necessarily have all the information we need to make decisions that impact our health by using these other foods. So the the deal is in today's fast paced world, it is so much cheaper, right, to make processed food. And it's unfortunately a sign of the times we live in. Now, cheaper doesn't necessarily mean healthy or even that it contains um, ways to make it without impact negative to our environment or resources that we have on earth. But alongside the natural and whole foods, we're finding this increasingly quantity of fake and lab generated um, alternatives that it, I think it's just really crucial to have the conversation around what that means and what that could potentially mean to our health long term. So number one, um, in, in my personal research around this, and as I've tried to navigate it with my own family, the biggest thing I find with these processed and lab and bioengineered things is that they are nutritionally deficient and they often lack the essential nutrients that we need to get from food. Now, they may taste the same as real food. They may claim that they've enriched it with things to put the vitamins and things back in it. But anytime you do that kind of processing to food, you can't add it in in the way that it is acceptable within the human body. So it's basically not doing anything to help you get the nutrients you need. And, and we really miss that point um, and cereal is a great example of this, right? Because you'll see it's enriched with whatever vitamin, right? And enriched with this and that and the other. And all that means is that they had to take those nutrients out to make that product. And then they tried to add them back in and it just doesn't work, right? And the other thing is these artificial ingredients um, usually come in the form of flavorings and preservatives that number one, give it an extended shelf life, right? So that's good for your grocery store. They can keep products on the shelf longer. They don't have to put them on sale as often and they don't have to worry about them going bad before someone buys it. But the problem is these additives and flavorings, what they chemically do between the taste buds and the brain is they rewire you, right? They alter what you your body naturally does to discern things like taste, flavor, spiciness, um, salt, all the flavors that we can taste in our mouth get altered by these ingredients. And then the really dangerous part is that this has been linked to things like why we have so many allergies and digestive issues like the gut, leaky gut stuff and the gluten allergies, right? We are not getting the right nutrients. We're not getting free from these chemicals and it's altering what we are experiencing in our body as a result because we are not robots. We are not made to live and sustain health on these artificial things, right? We just, our body doesn't know what to do with it. So I think the biggest concern I have is, when it comes to the, our health is that we don't understand the long-term effects of consuming these kind of things, right? That's not fully understood at this point. And the genetic modifications is introducing potential risk to our health that we are not prepared to deal with. And, you know, I think a really great example of this is if you follow the history of the artificial sweeteners and the diet soda situation, you realize that 
the artificial sweeteners has been linked to things like cancers and Alzheimer's and other things that were not in our diet prior to these things coming um, to save the day from overconsumption of sugar. So in, with a good intention, they ended up being something really detrimental to our health. Okay. And finally, what 50, so 60 years later, we're finally acknowledging artificial sweeteners are bad for us. Well, I think the same thing is going to happen with these bioengineered and lab generated and processed foods is that sooner or later, we're going to get smart about realizing these things are just not good for us, right? They are not what we should be eating on a regular basis to sustain health. Now, the other thing is, and to me, this is really important, and it's not a discussed point at all, is that the environmental impact of making these processed and lab-generated alternative foods requires a lot of energy and resources and water and chemicals, right? And the environmental uh, degradation and defortization and greenhouse gas emissions from these things is so many times worse than just growing real food, right? Than just farming like it was meant to be <laughs> used on the earth, right? It's it's incredible the amount of damage that these lab things can do to our soil and our resources and how much worse they truly are. So it's it's really concerning to me that you know if our if our societal concern is around how we protect our earth and you know stop things like the um, ice from melting and all these things why we would go down this route of these environmentally harmful approaches to producing food. So <clears throat> I think it's a long term. There's a lot more that needs to be learned about this. And I kind of feel like we are the, the lab rats being experimented on with some of this. So I highly encourage the conversation around it and the considerations for you and your own family when you are navigating those grocery store aisles, what is going in that cart and just how much of this bioengineered stuff is ending up in your pantry, in your refrigerator, and what that is potentially doing to your health now and long-term. So I think the best course and it's probably not popular opinion, but the best course is to mitigate as much of this as possible and stick to the real food. Opt for that organic, regenerative farming approach to things and get back to how humans were designed to eat and live and feel their best in their body. Um, and I think that truly is the answer. And to not support these alternative food things that are not food at all. So I would welcome the conversation. If you have experiences with this or questions, you know, I think it's just um, there's so much information that we don't know that needs to be talked about in a more general forum so that we as consumers and health advocates for our families can make the right decisions for us. Because my biggest, my biggest concern is that the people who already can't afford to eat well are the ones who are going to be most susceptible to this problem we have with alternative foods. And all of us are impacted, right? Because you can walk down any grocery store aisle and you're going to find bioengineering food if you look on those packages. We're all susceptible. But when you get into lab-grown meats and fake plant-based whatevers, the real culprit and the real people who are at risk here are the ones who already can't afford quality foods. So it's a people problem on a society and community level that we all need to be discussing and figuring out how to protect ourselves. So I would love to have this conversation and figure out more on a community level of what people are thinking about this and how we best protect ourselves. But my perspective is 
avoid it as much as possible. You know, look at your labels, read the, th you know, information on those, connect back to farmers in your community, build those connections to sustainably feed your family and rebuild our food system in the way we were designed to eat. But again, I would welcome the questions and conversations so that we can all better navigate this really questionable approach that seems to be trending in our foods.